welcome to Getting to Know ACS with Tracy and Jasmine. So today we are talking with Jessica Anderson and she is part of our new parent support program at ACS. So Jessica, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? What is new parent support? What is new parent support? Yes. New parent support is a program that is available to family members who are pregnant or who have children ages zero to three in the home and they feel like they could benefit from education or support. Okay, so is it only for family members or are soldiers involved as well? Uh, No, active duty can um, participate. Okay, so you're a registered nurse, right? I am. And there are how many of you guys in the program? There's three of us. And all of you are registered nurses? Yes. So you get a nurse to come to your house. Is that what what happens? Yes, you get a nurse to come to your house. And then what do you do? What do you do when you come to my house? (laughs) (laughs) What do do we do? Okay, so we provide home visitations. Okay. Uh, Right now that is being done virtually. Okay. Um, And we will do an assessment and see what your needs are. So if you have questions about, you know, you're anxious about your new baby, you're not sure what to expect, um, you have questions about milestones or what's normal, I mean, anything you can possibly think of, uh, we can answer those questions for you. Um, We can help guide you through the process. We can be there to support you help you get connected to resources in the community so you can build a support network. We're just like, you know, here is your family friend. Okay, because you actually think they're your friends. Because they are your friends, They are my friends. I love each one of them. (laughs) So you said the program's open for people who are pregnant and have children up to the age of? Three. Three, okay. So what are some of the things that you would, you know, say for instance, I'm a new mom and I've reached out to new parent support and you've done your assessment and maybe I'm having problems, you know, I can't get my baby to breastfeed or maybe my baby is throwing up milk all the time or something. Okay. So how would you, what would you do for me in, 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 in a scenario like that? What, what kind of things would you help me with? So, well, first we would figure out, like, well, what's going on? Like, what what kind of issues are you having with breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. Is it just a lack of knowledge? Is it um, maybe your baby's not latching properly? Uh, Maybe you need help on figuring out what's comfortable for you? Um, And we just walk through that process. If it's something that has to do with the latching process or, you know, you're just having a lot of difficulty, maybe your baby is just, you know, not working with you, Mm -hmm. then we would definitely refer you to a lactation counselor who can help you further. Okay. Um, But if it's more of just a lack of knowledge or uncomfortability, or maybe you feel like it's day one and you don't see any breast milk, um, that's completely normal. So we would just let you know, don't worry about it, just keep on with the process. Okay. Um, If your baby's throwing up a lot, same thing, we would ask, well, you know, how much are you feeding your baby? If, if you're bottle feeding, how much are you feeding? Are you burping properly? Um, and if you're breastfeeding, well, what maybe what are you eating that could be irritating your baby's stomach? And just go through that. And then if all of those things come out to be, you know, normal, then we would refer you to the pediatrician to find out, does your baby have acid reflux? Um, are there, th- you know, other things that need to be done? Okay. So, I see you writing over here. What's up? So, <laughs> like, my question is, let's say it's an active duty and then their spouse, right? So, uh-huh. will you guide them both or is it just one-on-one with the with the mother or how does that work? So, we prefer to do both parents. Okay. Um, however, we understand that some active duty members don't have the availability mm-hmm. to be able to come to every meeting. So, if they're not able to, we can just do it with the mom. Um, or the parent that's at home. Um, but we, we would really like both parents to be involved. Okay. And we can do, you know, work around their schedule. We can do it during the active duty members' lunchtime. Uh, we can provide kind of like an appointment slip, saying that they have an appointment with us um, that they can provide to their command um, that hopefully will get them a little bit of time off of work to be able to participate. Yeah. 
Um, the nice thing right now that we are doing it virtually, they don't have to actually leave work. We can three-way call, oh, okay. you know, and so they can do it from wherever they are. Okay. So do you also, I know you guys teach classes as mm -hmm. well. So what is one of the classes that um, you teach? So one of the classes we teach is baby boot camp. Okay. We do that every other month. Um, the next one. Don't. Is, oh, sorry. You're good. Okay. <laughs> I'm but, sorry. <laughs> look at the website. <laughs> okay, so they can check your schedule on. They can check their schedule on Facebook. Uh huh. Um, so you can look at any of the Facebook pages, either the Fort Bliss New Parent Support Facebook page, or the ACS page. And then, okay, so what what happens during baby boot camp? What do, what kind of what do y'all do, and who is it geared towards? Is it just the the expected mom, or is it like Jasmine said? Is it both? mom and dad at baby boot camp or what what does that class consist of so once again we prefer mom and dad to come okay mm -hmm. um and it is like a snapshot of like what to expect during your labor and delivery process during the postpartum period and the first six week of, six weeks of your baby's life so we talk about like how to hold your baby swaddle your baby burp your baby um that kind of stuff and then we have a lactation consultant who also comes in and talks about breastfeeding. Okay. So I know I've seen in the class, I think, mm -hmm. and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh huh. Do the guys get to put on like a baby, what is that thing a called? A pregnancy belly. Yeah. Do yes. They... <laughs> <laughs> yes. We love that. We, we try to get the husbands or the significant other to put on the pregnancy bellies for the entire class so that they can kind of get a, a small glimpse on like how it feels to be pregnant for a day and so with that pregnancy belly so you can adjust how much is in there and how much pressure is being put on yeah like on your kidney and so they can kind of understand why their significant other their spouse or whoever is going to the bathroom yes every five minutes yeah <laughs> and how difficult it is to like tie your shoe and Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about the that, floor. the mobility. Yeah, the mobility mm -hmm. of it. And then having to sit in a chair all day with this belly and kicking and got a little balls everywhere to kind of like. Oh, so it actually like moves? Yeah, like, well, there's some balls you can position to kind of simulate like pressure. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's now, crazy. I've yeah. seen them put it on. Yeah. And then do you also have that baby that you know that they can check out and it's like the, you can set it and the baby cries and yes you got to change the diaper and yeah all that stuff so yeah how's that work yeah so if anybody was interested yeah they can come check out a baby it cries you have to change the diaper you have to care for the baby and um all of that information is sent back to the computer uh -huh. and so we're able to tell like oh you dropped your baby on the floor <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you may want to do a little bit better <laughs> or you didn't you weren't you know a tentative and so you missed the feeding or you left your baby in the in, in the, the car, car seat yeah. all day oh yeah my gosh. so uh -huh. so what is the reaction you get from people when when they do that either the pregnancy belly or taking home the baby so the men they love the pregnancy belly. They think it's so cool. They 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 they, they think they're the best person alive. Um, and then the the babies people are pretty shocked. Like wow, I I don't know if I'm ready if and I'm maybe ready. I need some help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, you could do that bef <clears throat> before you're like to see kind of like a, a what is that called? Um, a test run. Yeah, a test, a test run. run. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could do it before. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, man. That would have helped me a lot. Yeah. I would have been like, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. Okay. And it's good, too, especially if you have, like, pets in your home. Oh, okay. You can that's determine right. how is your pet going to react. So maybe if you need to take measures prior to your baby being born, mm -hmm. you can do that. Okay, that's I, I think that's cool. So when someone, like, say, for instance, like Jasmine was saying, someone wants to, 
I, I, I know it's not called a test run, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Pre game? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, okay, I want to see it. If they just want to kind of fill out if they're actually, you know, I'm thinking about having a baby. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we really can handle having this baby. If somebody wants to do that, mm-hmm. how would they contact you guys to go in there and, and, and do that? So they would contact, Ace, you know, the the ACS number. Okay. Um, and then let them know that they're interested in that. And then one of um, us home visitors will contact and ask some questions and then can check out the baby to them. Okay. Um, it'll only be for um, overnight or over a weekend. Okay. And then they will... Uh, return the baby. I guess if they really want the true experience, it probably should be over the weekend. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's like, so yeah. don't do all your weekend stuff because you got a baby to exactly. take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they're active duty, do it overnight, right? See how tired you are before PT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I That's didn't, true. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can I do this? Yeah. <laughs> and so then, okay, so that we talked about the baby aspect. So what happens, because you said they go up to, you go up to three years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the things you find um, when someone would need your, you know, would request a home visitor for a toddler or for, you know, for those crawlers and the toddlers, the ones up to three? What are some things that you can help a parent with during those stages? Um, so a lot we get is potty training. Okay. Um, and eating, eating issues because they're really picky around that age. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are like the main things. What so, about adjusting with siblings? Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I know if you have a three-year-old and then a brand new baby, they're yeah. just, they either it's one extreme or not. They either yeah. love them or they're just like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Get it <laughs> Send out. Send it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Send that back where yeah. it came from. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So you said like eating issues so what are some of the um issues you have with toddlers with eating give us some some tips some tips yeah or some some things to look out for okay so toddlers are very picky okay um uh, depending on how you started them with their foods Mm -hmm. they a lot of times don't like their vegetables sometimes they do or do not like fruit um all they want to eat is chicken nuggets and french fries um, and so some parents get very frustrated, like my child's not eating enough, or maybe they, the doctor's saying that they're underweight. Uh-huh. Um, and so the biggest tip we can give is just to take it one day at a time. Right. Try to offer the more healthier option first before you put down the chicken nuggets or the French fries or, you know, the main right. course of the meal. Um, at the same time, though, during that time just let them eat what they want to eat you know if they want to eat you know uncrustables all day long (laughs) then let them eat uncrustables but always offer the healthy option first because i mean you know you talk about they're going to prefer uncrustables or they're going to prefer chicken nuggets or, or whatever the case may be but if they've never tasted that i mean if you haven't introduced that to them right at a young age they wouldn't know that they prefer it, that exactly so that's why you're saying you know go with the healthy option first right so you know i guess we should think about you know when we're eating it's like make sure they're getting introduced to the vegetables and all right. that stuff first yeah versus here have a french fry exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want to start with vegetables first before fruit, a lot of people like to start with fruit first because, you know, it's sweet mm-hmm. and kids and people in general would rather eat a fruit. But then you're kind of setting that up for later on in life for them to not prefer to have the vegetable. vegetables. Who wants to have an asparagus when I can have a strawberry? I mean, who True. wants to have an asparagus anyway? I mean, <laughs> I, I like asparagus, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, those grilled asparagus get me every time. Oh, but no. anyway. And, good. okay, so what is the play group about then? The play group. So yes. we do have play group. Those are fun. I watch one, and I'm just like, oh, look at them doing crafts. Yeah. I don't do crafts, but. <laughs> you should. They're very fun. I like to watch you guys do the crafts, but I'm just like, I'm not doing that. Exactly. They're, they're but fun. I don't have little ones either, so I'm not a crafty person. Well, it's good for adults, too. Thank you, Jessica. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we we right now, currently, mm-hmm. are running playgroup virtually on our Facebook page. Okay. Uh, we do that every two weeks. We sing a song, um, read a book, and we do a craft. 
and it's for any age zero to four um and even though you have little babies we still encourage you know you to join and just get them introduced to hearing a book hearing a song and then doing the craft with them okay and so with the crafts because i know when they come to acs when it's a you know in person Mm -hmm. you guys supply the stuff yes so to make it easy for anybody to be able to do this what kind of crafts do you do so that it's affordable is it usually i mean what kind of things do you guys use so we we try to use a lot of common household items Mm -hmm. so things like paper plates um, crayons, pen, color pencils, paint, that kind of stuff uh-huh. that typically people already have around their house. Right. Sometimes we do get um, supplies from the Dollar Tree. Okay. Um, so that's easily accessible to people. And we always go live the day prior oh, okay. to let people know these are the supplies that you need. And we try to kind of build on like kind of what you already have, cotton balls and right. from the previous times. Oh, okay. So that was, yeah. we know we had you buy a bag of cotton balls, yeah. so you should still have those. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. with the crafts, how do you decide what kind of craft you're going to do? Um, sometimes we try to go on the theme of the month. Okay. So, like, you know, February we did Valentine's and we did Black History Month. Okay. This month we're doing, um, like, St. Patrick's Day. Right. Stuff. So we try to go based upon the holiday or theme yeah. of the month. So, and I noticed sometimes you've even done it based on the book. That you're uh, yes, reading. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in the end, you want to sing your song? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish people could have saw her face. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at the song. I have the worst song out of all three of us. So, so the three of you, you guys alternate. We alternate, yes. As far as who's going to run play group. Yeah. And Jasmine, I'm so happy that you watched the... Little. Well, it's because I got to track the numbers, but I'm just like, oh, what do they do? Like, I was just like, I have never heard of this before. And I'm just like watching this. And I'm just like, oh, this is actually, I wish I would have known because I don't like reading. So you guys could have just, you know, read for her. <laughs> read for her, yep. <laughs> but, you know, children's books anyway. But yeah. um, then you guys do like the crafts. And like I said, I'm not a crafty person. So I've tried so many crafts with my kids and they're just like, mom, what did we create? And I'm just like, I have no idea. Like, we didn't follow any of the directions. It didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. That's okay. Crafts are different for everybody. It's individual. Yeah. My but kids are disappointed in me, so. No, I'm just <laughs> you, you need a home visitor. Yeah. <laughs> you need to practice. <laughs> Where were you when she needed her home visitor? Yeah. But I think, you know, I think you bring out a valid point, though, Jasmine, is that sometimes parents don't know, you know, it's like, what kind of craft can I do? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and... I think the fact that you guys go live and are like, here, this is something you can do with your kids, Mm -hmm. and it gives them an idea, because some people aren't crafty, yeah, or they're crafty in different ways, right? you know, so I think that's awesome that you guys are able to do that, and kind of, that's another way of helping these parents, you know, to Mm -hmm. be able to um, interact with their kids more effectively yeah or, or whatever the case may be teaching patience too right because we you know like little ones they like to touch everything their yeah uh, attention span goes like real quick so you guys mm-hmm. definitely help like hey like it's fine and yeah because you know jessica i've seen you and sometimes you get more into the craft than <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> than your, i'm like let, let me just do it <laughs> then your little co your, your little co-host sometimes your niece that comes on there yeah, as well so what you know what is one of the things that you enjoy most of all with the being a home being visitor home. what what brings you joy what brings me joy is just being there for people in the time of need right um they a lot of times will come back and say man i don't know what i would have done like without you just being there just being available if they have a question or if they're unsure about something um, that I know that they have somebody they can turn to and they don't have to call a doctor's office 24-7 for no. just plain questions, you know? Right. Um, so that brings me joy. Okay. Yes, look at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like to be wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, again, you know, going with the whole ACS thing again, and I know I keep saying this, but, you know, people at ACS really do care about mm-hmm. what they do. And to know that you guys are available 
for parents who maybe, you know, I'm a new parent or maybe I have an older child Mm -hmm. and I haven't had an infant in the house for, you know, five or six years. And things change because I look at all the gadgets and stuff that are available to parents now. You know, I would have loved to have had that. Oh, yeah. When my children (laughs) were young. And so do you guys do anything with um, car seats or anything like that to help them, you know, to give them information on how to get a car seat or uh, where to go get their car seats inspected to make sure they're installed correctly? Yes. So we provide information about um, car seat safety. Okay. Um, And then if they are in need of a car seat, we provide them with the resources. Um, We will refer them to the financial readiness program or inside the community if need be. Um, And then we also will refer them to the car seat safety inspection sites. Okay. And we always encourage that parents have their car seat checked. Um, because, you know, a lot of car seats are installed incorrectly. And how many people knew that car seats expire? Right, yes. Yeah, yeah they, did. they do. Uh, you knew that? I, yeah, I was, like, cleaning it one day, and I was like, what is this date? And I said, oh, my gosh, it's expired. Let's yes. go get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. I yeah. mean, again, attesting to my wonderful parenting. Yeah. <laughs> It's like I had car seats and I kept. I was like, okay, you had it, you get to use it. Yeah, that's that's what they did back then. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I had no idea that car seats expired until I started working at ACS and found out that they expire. They do. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's some good information that you guys can also give to those parents. Yes. And stuff. So, you have anything you want to add, Jasmine? I do not. I no. do not. But you, you guys do a lot more than I thought. I honestly thought it was baby boot camp and play group yeah. and then offered advice. But you guys do a lot. So, so yeah. and I think it's awesome that, you know, like I said, that people do have that resource mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to come to you and to um, be able to get that information. Because, you know, let's be honest. We're not, you know, most of the time you're not with your family. Right. You know? And a lot of times, you know, when you're going through this, I know I wanted to have my mother around me when I was having my children. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not available. So those questions that I would ask my mother, I could have asked one of you all. Yes. And so now to be, how do they get um, signed up for a home visitor? What what steps do they have to go through? So if they want to sign up, they only need to sign up for home visiting or baby boot camp. Okay. The play group, you can log on to our Facebook um, and, you know, join at any time. Um, so you, the best way to do it is to contact ACS. Which is 915-568-9129. Yes. I'm and glad let, she knows the number. <laughs> right? <I don't. laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, let Jasmine know that, you know, you're interested in a home visitor um, or in baby boot camp. And then she will provide the information to us, and then we will get in contact and set up an appointment. Okay. Yeah. And so this is a voluntary program. Mm-hmm. It is a voluntary program. So you can start and stop whenever you want. You can have one visit and be like, okay, I'm good. You can be here for one, two, three years and till your child ages out so or until you move you know okay and most of the time that's what happens with your clients huh they yes. age out because they, they're just like they just we love, love me. you jessica yes. <laughs> <laughs> love me so much Auntie jessica yeah <laughs> okay mm-hmm. so you know again thank you for coming out and talking with us you're welcome and giving us more information about the new parent support program that's at acs and until next time this is tracy and Jasmine, and don't forget to subscribe and push on that bell. Bye. 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 <laughs>